When I was growing up as a kid in the 1980s, I always loved the Andy Griffith Show. I don't know why, but I just adored the show. Then when the internet came around here 20, 25 years ago, I realized that the uh, town that Andy Griffith was born in, Mount Airy, North Carolina, is uh, kind of themed around the whole Mayberry um, town, I guess you'd say. You can even stay in his house, his uh, childhood house and everything like that. Well, looking at the map and everything, it was an 11-hour drive for me, so I never made it up up that way. Had a friend, a little bit younger than I have. She had a uh, health scare, or she, you know, around about way she could have died. And talking to her about it and everything, she's, you know, she started doing a whole lot more things with her kids and and going all all these different places and stuff. And I, I was kind of talking to her about it, and she said, you know, life's, you know, never guaranteed. Your next day is never guaranteed. So. When she said that, literally that week, I decided I'm going to Mount Airy, North Carolina. So here we are today in Mount Airy, North Carolina. And this is the downtown part. We got Barney here himself, the man, the myth, the legend. Got my bullet. Got his bullet. That's some proper bullet maintenance there. That's you right. see Naces? His is all green and moldy. It's green and moldy. There you go. And right down here is the Snappy Lunch. Snappy Lunch started in 1923, and it actually was here before the show was around in the 50s. And uh, it was the only business that was ever mentioned in the TV show. So we're going to have lunch here, and uh, could do some other things here around around town. <laughs> Yeah, there's quite a line if you plan on eating the snappy lunch get here early they have breakfast and lunch and just outside of the downtown area is Wally service station we can go on a squad car tour which we're going to do here shortly and they got some little museum type things at the hotel and Howard Sprague and Foley's Market Going here to the Mayberry Courthouse. You're a funny looking Otis. They even got a spot out here for the Darlings.
inside Wally's service station. Now this is inside the Andy Griffith Museum. It houses a lot of memorabilia from Andy's life and not just the Andy Griffith show. Um, as you can see here, this is a chair that was in his uh, childhood home. And these are some pictures and some artifacts and memorabilia from his uh, school days as a, a young child up into high school. You can see some of his class photos and such like that. And here is a actual slingshot that he used as a child you know, growing up as a, you know, well, rabble rouser, I guess you'd say. This particular case here showcases Andy's uh, dabble into the theater as he started his acting career you know, shortly thereafter high school and all that good stuff. This here is No Time for Sergeants. It is one of Andy's earlier uh, well-known, better-known movies. It, it was a comedy that came out in 1958, if I'm not mistaken. It shows some memorabilia from behind the scenes and some photographs of the staff. And actually, Don Knotts was in this film, too. Sadly, Andy Griffith passed away in 2012. Shortly before, in 2008, he donated one of his uniform shirts from the Andy Griffith show to a very popular con collector of his memorabilia, and that's the shirt and the letter. Now, this is memorabilia from the movie A Face in the Crowd. It came out in 1957. This is the movie that actually got Andy um, well, more well-known into the uh, TV and big screen uh, stardom, I guess you'd say. If I'm not mistaken, it had very mixed reviews when it finally when it came out. Here is some memorabilia from the Taylor House. These are items that you would regularly see in and around the Taylor home, such as the guitar here that Andy would play on the front porch. Now here's Barney's salt and pepper suit. Barney loved that salt and pepper suit like nobody else could. 
he said it fit just right for the dips. And here are some scripts from uh, a couple of the episodes from the Andy Griffith Show. Now this right here, this is something I thought was really cool. As trivial as it may be, this is the actual signs that were on the sheriff courthouse door. Justice of the Peace and the Sheriff. They were on the door from 1960 to the end of the show in 1968. And they got a display of them here with the courthouse sign above it. I thought that was really cool. Now here's some memorabilia from Guru Pyle, who was played by George Lindsay in the show. Some of his costumes and outfits. You can see his service station outfit and one of his going out suits. And actually, there is a bronzed uh, hat they made for Goober. Now, this is a six string guitar that was signed by a lot of the stars and co stars of the show that was acquired by a collector throughout the year. And I thought that was pretty cool, all the uh, various signatures on there. A lot of them I didn't recognize, but a lot of them I did. Now here is something you rarely see from movies and TV shows from this time frame. is a behind the scenes photograph of the Andy Griffith show. Another thing I thought that was cool I never even knew existed was there was an Andy Griffith comic book. I don't know when it was produced or how long it lasted or where you could get it at, but I thought that was pretty interesting. I'm actually looking, trying to find some of those actually right now. And uh, here are some awards. I forgot what these awards were for, but I believe it's from the Mayberry show. Now here's something I thought was also pretty interesting. Seeing this show was way before my time. I didn't know these items like this even existed. This is where Andy Griffith and the people from the show endorsed various items. I believe there was some fried chicken and black eyed peas and green bean companies, things like that. Here's some other memorabilia from the show. Now here's actually the jail keys that hung outside the jail. The security at the jailhouse was not all that great. It was pretty, pretty funny how Otis you know, let himself in and out. I thought that was really cool. That was the actual jail keys that was used in the show. And this is something pretty interesting too. This is Hal Smith, also known as Otis Campbell. This was the suit that he would go get snockered up in and have a snoot full and then in the Mayberry jail overnight. And there's an old tattered, busted hat he always wore with his famous suit. Now here's some things after the Andy Griffith show was done and everything like that. This is from right before Andy's death. Um, various uh, newspaper articles and uh, awards and pictures, things like that. This is the white suit from 2008 when, from Brad Paisley's Waiting on a Woman uh, country music video. I remember that video quite well and Right after I left the museum, I had to watch it again. So that was pretty interesting to see the actual suit that um, Andy Griffith wore in that music video. Now here's a cool little display. These are actually the items that were used in the Mayberry Courthouse from the fan, the desk, the chair that Andy sat in, the chair that Barney sat in. And there's the actual desk with the candlestick phone the pens, the letter tray, everything. And of course they got it behind a plexiglass so people don't tear it up, that sort of thing. But I thought that was very interesting to see. It was, you know, one of the key things that you saw a lot of because a lot of the, you know, going back and forth between Andy and Barney or Andy and Otis was done behind that desk there. So I thought that was really cool. And as I pan around here, you see they kind of got a little town set up and this is kind of a, a little overview of the museum. And that's the Earl Theater where uh, Andy did a lot of acting and things like that. And back to the courthouse, Mayberry Courthouse doors there. This whole mural was done by a single artist using spray paint. Absolutely amazing.
too much going on anymore. Looks like they're getting ready to roll up the sidewalks on us. Appreciate y'all watching. We'll see you next time.